Tervetuloa taas kuningaskunnan tuuliohjelmasarjan pariin. Edellisessä jaksossa katsoimme, mitä tapahtui ennen Hitlerin aikaa Saksan kirkossa ja mikä avasi ovet Hitlerin vallalle. Tässä jaksossa katsomme, mitä Saksassa on tapahtunut Hitlerin ajan jälkeen ja millainen hätä heillä on niistä kansoista, jotka kirkkojensa tilan tähden ovat nyt kääntymässä juutalaisia ja Israelia vastaan. Do we understand that in a different framework history is in a way repeating itself? The church in Germany in the early 20th century was not aware of it. They were indifferent, they were asleep, they were more part of the problem than part of the solution. Now Israel is threatened again by the nations. Where is the church today? Are we aware of the danger? Are we aware of the signs of the time? Koska Saksan kirkko ei pysynyt uskollisena Jumalalle ja hänen sanalleen, kansa kaatui seuraamaan Hitleriä. Saksalaiset ovat kansana kokeneet, mitä kansakunnalle merkitsee se, että se kääntyy juutalaisia vastaan. Eurooppalaisesta sivistyskansasta tuli brutaali murhaaja ja heidän aloittamansa maailmansota tuhosi Euroopan ja lopulta johti Saksan tuhoon ja kansan jakautumiseen kahteen valtioon. Saksalainen Harald Eckert on kansainvälisen Christians for Israel-järjestön puheenjohtaja. Hän kantaa huolta siitä, ettei muille kansoille maailmassa kävisi samoin kuin saksalaisille. We try to connect with the prayer movements worldwide and say please commemorate what happened 70 years ago. Please be aware that in a similar way things are happening today as they have happened 70, 80, 90 years ago. 70 years ago it was the Jews in Europe that were the scapegoats and led to the slaughter bank, the Holocaust. 70 years later it's Israel which is the scapegoat amongst the nations. So Israel is isolated, demonized, terrorized and some nations would like to see Israel be annihilated. Saksalaiset kristityt ovat toisen maailmansodan jälkeen käyneet syvän prosessin läpi. Dieter Steinrück kasvoi sota-ajan Saksassa. After the war, Germany was in a shambles. The bombing had happened and um, most cities were in ruins. And people were without hope because the war was lost. Hitler's promises were all falling flat, nothing there. So they looked for something to fill that, that despair. And then they turned to God. And there was deeper life meetings in our town and they were, people were gathering in big numbers and were, were looking for something to hold on to because there was nothing to hold on to. Myös Dieter itse tuli alle 10-vuotiaana uskoon tässä Saksan sodan jälkeisessä herätyksessä. Sotavuosien tilinpäätös oli saksalaisille syvä järkytys. Well, as a German, I feel ashamed of what German people have done to the Jewish people. Tavalliset saksalaiset eivät sodan aikana tienneet keskitysleireistä. No, it was uh, kept secret. There was those factories that were belching smoke and they were burning people. That, that, that it was, that, it was uh, Fence, fenced off and, and kept, kept secret. Juutalaisten kohtelu alkoi Dieterille valjeta oman perheen kautta. Actually one of my uncles was a soldier uh, in, uh, in, in the Warsaw ghetto and he brought pictures from there. And that was very disturbing. I mean that they were not killing people in the Warsaw ghetto but just the conditions in the ghetto. Myös seuraavan sukupolven kristityille Saksan sodan ajan tapahtumat ovat olleet kipeä kysymys. I became a Christian when I was age 16, a born again Christian. And even before as a teenager, a young teenager, I was struggling with the question of what, what happened to the generation of my parents and grandparents. Um, what happened with the German nation, a civilized nation being led astray so magnificently by a person called Adolf Hitler. How could it happen? And after becoming born again, I asked about where was the church? Yeah, so I read, I studied, I struggled with this question. 
I had a deep identity crisis as a German. Myös Dieter Steinrückin on jälkeenpäin ollut vaikea käsittää, miksi ihmiset ihastuivat Hitleriin. Uh, I can't under explain it. It seems crazy now. But at the time people were shouting hallelujah. Here is the man for Germany. Even though he wasn't even a German. He was an Austrian. Saksalaisille uskoville avain kansallisesta traumasta toipumiseen on ollut se, että he ovat löytäneet rakkauden juutalaisiin. It was very difficult for me to even consider loving my own nation after all they did. So it was a search that I had, even as a teenager. And then um, 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 later in my teenage years, I got connected to a Bible teacher called Derek Prince. And I, I absorbed his teaching very intensely. Later I became a friend and a co-worker of Derek Prince. I started Derek Prince Ministries in Germany. Uh, so his teaching helped me <coughs> to get much more in-depth knowledge about Israel and the church, and even on the starting point, the nations. And I started to develop a biblical and Holy Spirit-inspired love for the Jewish people in Israel. The, the Jewish people are the people that God separated from the rest of the world as, their spe as his special people. And to me, that is uh, uh, very important to support Israel because they have a special place in God's in God's world. And the more I loved the Jewish people in Israel with the biblical love and with revelation coming from the Holy Spirit, through that uh, kind of a um, uh, um, way around, I started to love my own German people more and more. And I started to understand that God has a redemptive purpose for my nation, the greatest of all sinners, speaking about the nation and the relationship to the Jewish people. Syvien Saksaan liittyvien kysymysten äärellä Harald Eckertille siis selvisi, että raamatussa ei puhuta vain yksilöiden pelastuksesta, vaan raamattuun on kirjoitettu myös Jumalan ihmeellinen suunnitelma kansojen suhteen. The heart of the matter is that God loves the nations. God loves the nations and the peoples. He has created them after the flood out of the sons and uh, daughters-in-law of Noah. He has created the nation with a covenant of grace, in the covenant of care, in the covenant of love under the sign of the rainbow. The last thing that is written in the Bible about the nation is in Revelation 22, providing healing for the nations by the leaves of the tree of life planted at the river of life. So it's the, God's history with nations starts with grace and it ends with grace and healing. The nations turned away for, from God by building the Tower of Babel. So God had to judge the nations. But he did not finish by judgment. He opened a way of redemption for the nation by calling out Abraham and calling a unique nation, the Jewish nation, chosen nation, holy nation, a holy calling to become a blessing to the nations. How do the nations respond? Either they reject God's choice or they are in a humble way receiving God's choice. Jumala on päättänyt siunata kansakunnat Israelin kansan kautta ja valinnut siis juutalaiset ja Israelin hyvyytensä kanavaksi kansoille. So God wants to bless the nation, he wants to heal the nation, but it depends upon how they respond to God's chosen people, the Jewish people. But it's not a message of judgment in the core. It's a message, message that expresses God's love for the nations and the peoples of this earth if they are opening up for his love being expressed in the Jewish people. Raamatun mukaan kansat ovat matkalla ratkaisun laaksoon, jossa ne joutuvat tekemään lopullisen päätöksen siitä, ovatko ne Israelin puolella vai sitä vastaan. Because based on Genesis 12, those nations who bless Israel will receive God's blessing. And those who are against Israel, God turns away his face from those nations. And this will culminate at the end as what Joel calls a valley of decisions, where at the end nations either go to the valley of decision and take military action against Jerusalem and against Israel, probably as an expression of the United Nations, 
or they have the strength to abstain from that going in that direction and will throw out of the picture hopefully take sides with Israel at least morally and then they may end up on the side of the sheep nations as Jesus explains in Matthew 25:31 in the following verses Suomalaisilla on tämän kansojen tason ymmärtämisessä ihan oma haasteensa sillä kaksi tuoreinta raamatun käännöstä ovat kokonaan kadottaneet tämän Jeesuksen kansoille tarkoittaman viestin. Niissä Matteuksen 25. luvun kansoihin viittaava pronomini on nimittäin käännetty sanalla ihmiset. Vuoden 38 käännöksessä alkuperäinen ajatus on vielä tallella. Mutta kun ihmisen poika tulee kirkkaudessaan, ja kaikki enkelit hänen kanssaan. Silloin hän istuu kirkkautensa valtaistuimelle. Ja hänen eteensä kootaan kaikki kansat, ja hän erottaa toiset toisista, niin kuin paimen erottaa lampaat vuohista. Ja hän asettaa lampaat oikealle puolelleen, mutta vuohet vasemmalle. Jeesuksen tuhatvuotiseen kuningaskuntaan tulevat Matteuksen evankeliumin seuraavien jakeiden mukaan sitten vain ne kansat, jotka ovat välittäneet Jeesuksen vähimmistä veljistä eli israelilaisista. Niillä kansoilla, jotka nyt kääntyvät Israelia vastaan, ei siis ole paikkaa myöskään tulevassa Jeesuksen hallitsemassa Israelin kuningaskunnassa. Siksi kansojen valintojen suhteen eletään nyt kriittistä aikaa. Well, if, if we take the United Nations as the most prominent example, how nations vote and how nations decide, uh, you have a number of decisions of the majority of the nations that go against Israel. One third of all the negative decisions of the UN against any nation go against Israel. This is led by the uh, group of Islamic nations. They are the majority within the UN, around 17 nations being Islamic is the largest bloc. Then you have other nations like African and Asian nations that belong to the non-alliance bloc uh, of Cold War times. But they are tending to flow with the majority of, uh, under the leadership of Islamic nations to be anti-Israel. And then what is more dramatic that in recent times, in recent time means in the last 40 years, um, European nations uh, also tending more and more to turn against Israel and flow along with the stream of majority, which is Islamic and non-alliance movement nations. And, and so most of the decisions the EU either backs up anti-Israel decisions or uh, stays neutral. The last decision of, of greater significance being on November 29, 2012, the vote about the Palestinian statehood bid. Um, where then at the last minute Germany abstained, most of the European nations abstained, tried to stay neutral, which means that the majority had their way. Um, and so there are a number of decisions and it's my conviction that as the return of the Lord draws nearer and nearer, the more negative decisions the nations do against Israel, the more difficult it will be for the nations to get out of that habit at the end. So they might be drawn into the valley of decision at the end, more or less easily, to come to the point of decision where it says, well, um, negative decision against Israel is not enough. Uh, to punish Israel by vote is not enough. We have to do something on the military side. We have to march against Jerusalem. We have to march against Israel to secure world peace. So it's a, it's, it's, it's a tendency that's pretty obvious already. Saksalaisena Harald Eckert muistuttaa, että kansat eivät ensimmäistä kertaa ole valumassa Jumalan valitsemaa kansaa vastaan. A historic parallel could be drawn to the conference of Evian in 1938, July 38. Their nations, over 30 nations scattered to decide on the fate of the Jewish refugees from out of Germany. And it was the famous conference when almost no nation was willing to open up for Jewish refugees, including United States, including Canada. Only two or three nations, small nations, decided to take a small contingent of refugees. So that was decision time in 1938. 
Suomi ei ollut mukana tässä Evianin konferenssissa, mutta myös Suomella on oma osansa tässä synkässä historiassa. Saksan juutalaisilla olisi ollut vuonna 1940 mahdollisuus paeta Amerikkaan. Heillä olisi myös ollut vielä vuoden verran mahdollisuus lähteä Saksasta, mutta sota oli sulkenut mahdolliset pakoreitit. Vain yksi pakoreitti oli enää jäljellä, nimittäin Suomen Petsamon satama oli vielä auki. Toukokuussa 1940 Saksan juutalaisyhteisö oli sitten saanut sovittua laivalinjan Petsamon liinahamarin satamasta Yhdysvaltoihin. Samaan aikaan Saksan rinnalle sodassa asettunut Suomi ei kuitenkaan omaan kansalliseen etuunsa vedoten antanut juutalaisille lupaa käyttää Liinahamarin satamaa. Asiaa tutkineen valtiotieteiden tohtori Taimi Torvisen mukaan Suomesta olisi voinut tulla huomattavan juutalaismäärän pelastaja. Suomi kuitenkin päätti toisin. Way I feel it is decision time now for the nations, if they go with the major mainstream votes of the UN, which is critical and animosity against Israel, or if they get the strength to step out of that stream and find a, a decision that's based on morals, on ethics, on a right understanding of history and of human values, and that's the decision that nations can do with every vote. Natsiaikana Saksassa uskovien välinpitämättömyys mahdollisti juutalaisten joukkotuhon. Saksalaisena Harald Eckert haluaa herättää uskovat tällä kertaa ennen kuin on liian myöhäistä. And hopefully intercessors start to pray for their governments, for their nations, that uh, prudence, that uh, an understanding of history, of, of righteousness, of truthfulness will enter into governments, into decision makers more and more, to wake up somehow and, and, and see through the deception and through the manipulation that's happening by the Islamic forces and by, by others who join and say, well, That's not true. Like the government of Canada, they kind of woke up in the last few years. The Canada of Australia, they have woken up. But with all of those nations, they have been intercessors waking up before and stand in the gap, stood in the gap for their government and for the nations and, and were witnesses of a turnaround. So what happened with two, three, four nations in the last five years or so may happen to many, many more nations in the next five years. Keväällä 2015 tulee kuluneeksi 70 vuotta toisen maailmansodan päättymisestä Euroopassa. Harald Eckertin johdolla järjestetään silloin maailmanlaajuinen sadan päivän rukous kansakuntien ja Israelin suhteen puolesta. Hankkeessa on mukana kolme eurooppalaista Israel-järjestöä, Christian for Israel International, European Coalition for Israel ja Operatio Exodus Ebenezer International. Well, the 100 days start at a very significant date, the 27th of January 2015. That was 70 years ago, the, the date when Auschwitz concentration camp was delivered. And the 100 days finish on May 8, which is 70 years after the end of World War II in Europe, which was the end of Holocaust. Harald Eckert on kirjoittanut myös kirjan nimeltä Israel, kansat ja ratkaisulaakso. Eckertin johtama rukoushanke haastaa kaikkien maiden esirukoilijat heräämään taisteluun oman kansansa puolesta. The closer the return of the Lord is, the more there is decision times for the nations. And Christian intercessors should be aware of that and pray for the nations that they at the end will end up on the side of the nations that bless Israel and be regarded as sheep nations and not curse Israel and then be regarded as goat nations. So that in a synopsis is what the core of the prayer call is about. Maailmalla on jo rohkaisevia läpimurtoja kansojen suhteessa Israeliin. Canada 12-15 years ago was one of the western nations that voted like most of the other western nations. But in the last, let's say, four or five years, with Stephen Harper becoming prime minister, if you ask the diplomats of Israel, they would say Canada is probably the most warm-hearted Western nation as far as the relationship to Israel is concerned today. What went before is a very powerful movement of repentance amongst Christians in Canada. 
And a similar story a nation like Uganda can tell. Yeah, in Africa, you know, you had Idi Amin 30, 35 years, a Muslim, being at this port in Uganda. And you, then you had prayer movements starting out of, um, in Uganda, praying for change, praying for salvation of the nation from uh, Muslim despots and from destruction and from uh, civil war. And then step by step, Uganda had a turnaround in the last 15, 20 years. And revival came in and bro broke through. And then you had uh, you know, a, a, a couple as president where the wife was a born again believer and the husband, the president, at least is very positive towards Israel and positive to biblical values and, and gave leadership to Uganda in a, in a redemptive and positive way. So these are positive examples of the last five or ten years that could be encouraging to many more intercessors and hopefully set, a, set an example for many other nations to follow. Myös Suomessa on viime eduskuntavaaleista alkaen rukoiltu järjestelmällisesti eduskunnan ja hallituksen puolesta, ja myös Suomi on alkanut hallitustasolla osoittaa heräämisen merkkejä suhteessa Israeliin. Sisäministeri Päivi Räsänen osallistui holokaustin muistotilaisuuteen Jerusalemissa huhtikuun lopussa 2014. I, I think that all of us we have to remember what happened. Uh, over 60 years ago in the ground of Europe mm -hmm. and we have to be firm that we do not allow this happen again and I, I think that uh, the stories about the survivors who, who were telling their stories yesterday they were very touching and moving for two reasons mm -hmm. first they told horrible stories about human beings persecuted and, and murdered and, and the families destroyed. And, and that is what we have to remember and because they were, they were valuable human beings made in the image of God and they were destroyed. But the second reason what touched me was um, the beginning and birth of the state of Israel. It was a miracle. And, and those people, they were also building the new state of Israel. And they found a new start to their life and, and to their security. Rukousta Suomen puolesta on tarpeen jatkaa, sillä Suomen virallinen ulkopolitiikka on yhä tukevasti Israel vastainen. Muutos Suomessa on kuitenkin jo alkanut. I, I know that in Finland we have very very much friends of Israel and friends of Jewish people. I, I belong to them. Harald Eckert uskoo, että Jumala voi kääntää jopa Saksan synkän historian vielä voitoksi. Well, the prayer call 2015 is something that has grown within me for many many years, step by step. Being a Christian in Germany and out of Germany. Uh, I thought for a long while about how God's redemptive purposes can come into a nation like Germany. You know, as far as our relationship to the Jewish people and to Israel is concerned, we have been the greatest of sinners. So according to how I understand the Bible, we are, have been doomed to go in the direction of the goat nation, except if some very deep intervention of God and the intervention of grace and redemption would come in. Jumalan tapana on kuitenkin tuoda voitto juuri sinne, missä on kärsitty tappio. Germany was the greatest of all sinners, but then the Lord spoke, like Romans 5:20, where sin abounds, God grace wants to abound even more. And I started to get faith and grow in faith. Could it be that maybe the greatest of all sinners, the last of all nations, God wants to turn around us as a German nation? to be a, 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 a testimony in the end time for God's redemptive power to the church in Germany and then to the nation as, as a whole. So for the last 20 years, the more specific for the last 12 years, on the basis of the 70-year history and before on the 50-year history, um, I call the church, many of us call the church into repentance but also into new hope. Yeah. That where sin abounds, God's grace wants to abound even more. So it was a very deep process of repentance, of new hope, 
um, for the church in Germany and for Germany as a nation. Saksalaisten kutsulla rukoukseen oman kansan ja Israelin suhteen puolesta on suuri painoarvo ja Saksan esimerkki on jo rohkaissut monia. And we have seen some major answers of praise for the German nation, for the German government, for the German people and for the church in Germany. And I don't think that there is a full breakthrough yet. But there is much more of a breakthrough than most of us could dare to believe 20, 30 years ago, starting with the reunification of Germany as a sign of God's grace, as a sign of he wants to start anew, he wants to use us as a blessing for Israel and a blessing for surrounding European nations. And so it's been a struggle, it still is a struggle, but many more positive things came from out of Germany in the last 10, 20 years that most of us would have dared to believe in the 70s or even early 80s. So we see this as an answer of prayer. And we are encouraged in this struggle. We are encouraged to continue to see God's redemptive purposes for Germany in our time, in the time to come. And out of that encouragement, I felt a message is growing, a testimony is growing even to other nations. And as I'm traveling more and more and give that testimony, Uh, intercessors and believers um, and even um, government leaders are starting to listen more attentive to their testimony. Saksalaisilla on nyt oman historiansa tähden mahdollisuus varoittaa muita kansoja kulkemasta sitä tietä, jonka he kulkivat kääntyessään juutalaisia vastaan. Rukoillaan vielä yhdessä. Kiitos isä siitä, että monet kansat ovat heräämässä näkemään sinun suunnitelmasi siunata kansakuntia Israelin kautta. Isä, minä pyydän, että monen kansan esirukoilijat heräävät rukoilemaan oman kansansa ja Israelin suhteen puolesta. Minä pyydän isä, että Suomi saa olla mukana niiden kansojen joukossa. Amen. Nämä kuningaskunnan tuuliohjelmat tuotetaan Israelissa katsojien lahjoittamilla varoilla. Jos sinä tahdot osallistua omalla panoksellasi näiden ohjelmien tekemiseen, soita ruudussa näkyvään numeroon 0600 100 77 tai anna lahjoituksesi pankkitilille.